I am excited to branch out a little bit from our butterfly series and paint this beautiful Luna Moth with you today. Hi, my name is Katrina Crouch. I am the artist and educator behind this YouTube channel, and I'm super passionate about teaching the why behind the house, that you can take what you learn in these videos and implement them into your own artwork. As always with my realistic painting tutorials, the illustration is the key. And if you're not confident with your illustration skills, I will have my painting template linked down below. It comes with a black and white version, a grayscale version, and links to reference images that you can use. For this tutorial, I will exclusively be using the Viviva Color Color Sheets. These are handmade watercolor palettes. So you see each of those squares is basically what you would, the same thing that you would find in like a pan of watercolor. Um, so it's dried pigment and all you have to do is add water to it. Each sheet is separated by a wax piece of paper and that will help to keep the colors from mixing together or causing any problems. One thing that completely caught me off guard is how pigmented these colors are. Um, I was really surprised as I was swatching them to find that the colors were so rich. I did later find out while I was painting that the colors are also staining, and so that might change your approach. This is a fall palette. This is their Inktober, official Inktober collaboration palette. I will also be including, as I'm saying, each color that I'm using, I will be including something that's comparable from my regular palette so that you're able to recreate the effect. On the very last page of the Baviva Colors color sheets, um, palette, if you will, there is a little flap that you can pull out and it's perfect for kind of a mixing palette. So we're going to be using that quite a bit today. Um, I am not the kind of person who likes to just take raw color and put it onto my palette. I like to, or put it onto my painting. I like to have it mixed beforehand. And especially in this case when I'm using a, I'm painting a Luna Moth, so I really want that iconic light blue green color. So to start off, I'm gonna try mixing some of that. I'm starting with this light green color, which is very similar to sap green. It's a little bit more saturated than sap green. So really just find a lighter green that you have in your collection that might be a little bit on the warm side, but not too warm. There's definitely not like a huge yellow undertone here. Then I'm switching over to the blues. I love that they have a light blue and a cool tone blue. I decided to go with the cool tone blue, which is very similar to like an indigo blue, it's called ink blue. And because it's a little bit cooler, it'll help to kind of balance out that warmer edge of the green that we picked out. It will also, because indigo, it's not super bright. It's very rich, but it's not super bright. And so that'll help to kind of tone everything down. If you don't have an indigo, an ultramarine with a little bit of maybe like a red orange, um, like cadmium red might really help to kind of saturate, desaturate that a little bit, but you'll only want to add a very little bit. Now I am planning to use the brighter blue, which is this peacock blue in this palette, just to add a little pop. Now, one thing that I am doing before I even get started with the painting is I am going to apply some masking fluid. This is totally optional, but it's just something I like to do for my butterflies or my animals when I want to get that little bit of texture on, or if I just want to be lazy. <laughs> but for the Luna Moth especially because it's kind of fuzzy. So before I applied any paint, I decided to go through with my masking fluid just to block off some areas and make that whole process of making it a little more textured or fluffy looking. I put that whole process kind of on autopilot just by adding these little dashes of the masking fluid. Now that our canvas is officially ready to go, I'm going to go in with my first pass, which will just be a gentle wash of color. Um, now again, if I had known that these colors were so staining um, and so pigmented, I wouldn't have gone quite as heavy for my first pass. It's totally fine. I tend to be kind of a timid painter um, and would rather do more layers that are lighter than one heavier layer, which is what this kind of ended up being. And again, that is totally fine. It actually speaks to the quality of the paint in many ways, um, but some people want more staining colors and some people don't. I just tend to be one of those people who prefers less staining because I like to be able to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but um, this, wall works out really well. And thankfully, the water held really well on this paper. So what I'm doing right now is I'm really trying to make sure that this whole section, um, this lower half of the wing, is all wet at the same time. Now, I don't want it to be sopping wet. I don't want there to be any puddles sitting on. That's when you get blooms or areas of distortion where the color will kind of look funny. What I'm trying to do is create a single area where I can kind of tap some different colors in and it will have a smooth gradient. So right now I'm kind of trying to decide which color to use first. 
I'm going to be diving in, I think, to the peacock blue. Yes, be taking a little bit of this peacock blue, so I'm just barely dipping into it. Really rinsing my brush off because I don't want it to be like too striking of a color because it is such a saturated color. And I'm just tapping that in. Um, you can use an ultramarine or a cerulean blue as well, and that would get you kind of a similar effect. Um, but if I had known these colors were so staining, I would have picked that up a little bit, just so it would have been a little bit lighter right there. And again, it worked out because I was using this wet on wet technique. It doesn't look unintentional. Um, just if you're going to use something that's this pigmented, I found that having it a little bit more watery um, will help you. Next, I decided to do basically the same thing, but in the opposite corner with a yellow. So this is a warmer tone yellow. I'd say it's similar to like a cadmium yellow, maybe with a little bit of lemon yellow mixed in there. Um, you know, I kind of like to mix those together to get a true neutral yellow. And I'm just doing this to add a little bit of visual interest. Um, if you have painted with me before, you know that I like to have kind of an unexpected pop of color in there. And even though there's not going to be a ton of yellow, in a Luna Moth, um, having it in there just kind of helps to play up the blue and the green a little bit more. The next color I'm going to dive into is called Tree Bark Brown. It is a cool tone brown, the cool tone brown in this palette, very similar to like a burnt umber. Um, and I'm going to be very lightly adding that to the section that is still wet, thankfully, um, just to kind of get a little bit of definition. I'll be using this throughout the entire process. Um, right now I'm mixing it with a little bit of that happy yellow, our um, yellow tone, just to kind of try and lighten it. Um, I did kind of decide to warm it up a little bit, but I didn't want the warmer brown. I don't know what I was doing, but it's just kind of how my brain works, where <laughs> sometimes I think I don't want one color and I end up basically mixing it anyway. Um, I loved adding it to kind of the edge of the Luna Moth wings. Um, there's a lot of definition and just this little bit of brown on the very tips of their wings. Um, and I did not want this to get too dark. So I was working, see I'm like barely picking up any pigment there. I'm working very gently. This is around when I started to realize that the paper was being stained. I wasn't able to pick it up. So in order to kind of avoid some mistakes, I wanted to go very lightly. I added a little bit of a pop right where kind of that ruffle on the, what is that called? The tail of the wing. Um, and just to kind of put that a little bit in shadow, it doesn't necessarily do that in real life, but it creates kind of this whimsical flowy effect. Now you might get a little bit bored with this process. <laughs> We're going to basically do the exact same thing we did on the lower half, except it'll be on the top half. So I am just carefully wetting the entire space that we're gonna be working with. This is one way that you can kind of avoid those hard edges and again, avoiding the blooms. I don't want this to be sopping wet. Depending on your paper type, you might wanna work in smaller sections, but I found that with this paper, I can work in a slightly larger section like this and the paper will still remain wet. So you can see how there's that shininess, that little bit of a glisten on there. Again, it's not a puddle. You want to avoid the puddles, um, but it does uh, hold the water pretty well. Now here I am dabbing up a little bit of water um, that went onto the eye of the wing, so that little detail section. If there's any water there that's touching the water I'm going to add pigment to, the pigment will then spread into that area. So you want to be very careful with this, and then you can apply the pigment honestly a little more lazy. <laughs> You'll see that I'll go much faster when I'm actually adding the pigment in. I'm just kind of grabbing a little bit and tapping it in, spreading it around, but it will kind of blend on its own. And that's the benefit of working on this wet on wet technique. And one of the reasons that I, for my initial pass, almost always will work wet on wet. This is not a fast process, but it is an oddly satisfying one. <laughs> Now, once that whole section is covered with the amount of green that I want, I'm gonna go in again with that peacock blue, and I'm going in very lightly. I didn't go lightly enough there, um, but if I were to do it again, um, I would probably mix a little bit of that peacock blue in with the original green, just to take the edge off of that saturation. Um, and that's for my style. If you have a style that you like, you know, the really bright pops, then go for it. Um, but just for my own style and trying to keep it a little bit more realistic while having that playful element in there, um, I don't want that to be the first thing that you notice. So I probably would have softened it by adding a little bit of the original color in there, having it nice and watered down, and then adding it on. And that would have just helped it to blend in a just a 
more controlled manner. Again, I added the yellow to the edge and then for the very edge of the entire wing, I'm just adding a little bit of that brown. Um, again, it's like a burnt umber with a little bit of the yellow added to it. And I'm just kind of slowly playing around with the color. So if it's not bleeding as much as I want it to, I can add a little bit more and pull it down and kind of get it where I want it to go. We're gonna let that dry and move on to the body of our Luna Mouse. Now, this didn't have a lot of color, but I wanted to add a little bit of definition. After all, I went through all the trouble of adding that masking fluid to make it look fluffy, so I am going to add some color. <laughs> I decided to start with just kind of a very gentle layer of the yellow tone that we were using mixed with that burnt umber color. Um, and it's very watered down, so it's kind of just like a very light tan tone. I will be adding a little bit of the green eventually, but I was just kind of going around the edges just to get a little bit of modeling. I want to show that there's this little bit of a curve or a rounded section where his little body is. So I'm going over the whole thing to wet it, but then I will be going back, getting some color, and then just slowly tapping that in. Now to make this whole thing cohesive, I'm adding a little bit of our original green tone, our kind of our light green and our indigo color. Um, I'm just adding a touch of that to the shadows to kind of help them blend together. I'm doing this while it's still wet again so that those colors will blend seamlessly and everything will look a little bit more cohesive because it will be kind of blending into that more tan tone. It'll look like they're kind of coming together and like the body is one with the wings. Now basically all I'm going to do is repeat the same steps on the other side, so we're going to skip ahead and get into those fun details. The antennae were a little bit more of a warmer tone, but in order to keep everything consistent, I decided to stick with the colors that we're already using. So I'm taking that happy yellow with a little bit of, you guessed it, that burnt umber color, and I am, or what's it called, tree bark? Something like that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, and I'm just kind of messing around with it. Again, because these colors are staining, I should have gone in a little bit lighter. I went in to kind of pick up some of the color after I had kind of been messing with it and applied it and it didn't really pick up, which is fine. We worked with it and it turned out really nice anyway. Um, but it's just kind of a very light wash of this color um, so that everything is, you know, it's there, but it's not going to distract you from the rest of the moth. For this next section, I'm going to be mixing together some of our burnt umber tone with the inky blue. So this is a dark warm brown with a cool tone dark blue, and that will give us a nice rich neutral dark tone. Um, I don't want black, but I am kind of going for something really quite dark. Um, and I'm going to do this for the top arches of the Luna Moth Wings. Now my intention here was that I would build up the color on that interior edge that I'm working on. I'm just kind of tapping that in um, and that I would be able to then pick up the color here. But again, this is where I was reminded these colors are so rich and pigmented, it did stain my paper. Um, so that didn't work out so hot. But um, if one way that you can avoid that if you're working with these colors is to just not wet the entire area. So keep a section that is not wet um, so that your color will not bleed there. Um, but this worked out fine. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, if I were to paint this again with a little bit more experience, knowing these colors and this palette a little bit more, I would have done some things differently, but that's part of the fun of experimenting, trying new things, using new supplies, and just exploring different forms of art. Um, so that didn't work out so hot for me, but um, if you are watching this, you can learn from my mistakes. I am just very carefully following the contour of the wings and just filling it all in. So there was a mistake, we're gonna make it look intentional by continuing it through the whole piece. Then I'm also gonna go in and just slowly fit together each piece for the eyes on the wings, which is just kind of the uh, round pattern that comes on the wings. I'm putting these together kind of like a puzzle piece. So I, you see I'm pausing here, I'm looking at my reference image, I'm counting, you know, like which diff how many different sections away these darker sections are, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint them as closely modeling the reference image as possible. So I'm just going through 
and okay, this outer section is the same as that nice dark brown. If I go down to this bottom one, this top section is that dark brown, or at least very similar to it, and so I might as well use what's already on my brush. For this lighter brown section of the eyes, I'm going with a very light wash of that brown that I'm using because I do want to kind of desaturate a little bit my next color. I'm going to be going in with this fire tone and it is a beautiful metallic orange. You can see that shimmer there and it has just a really fun quality to it. So I do want to include that in this painting. I think it's one of the standout pigments of this palette and so why not play it up and have a little bit of fun here. Um, any metallic paint could work. Um, it's, I would say it's just a rich um, cadmium orange tone. Um, with that little bit of shimmer. So if you just have a shimmer color, you could add to it or you can leave that out, feel free. Um, and I'm just adding this to the eyes. I am making it more pigmented and more saturated than it appears in real life, but that's kind of the fun part of art is that you're able to kind of exaggerate things that you want to play up and enjoy, just kind of like the brighter blue that I added in, which isn't necessarily super accurate, but is a really playful way to um, celebrate what's already found in nature. I also added a light wash of that color to the lower set of eyes on the lower wings. Um, not as saturated as on the top wings, um, but I did want it to look cohesive. So there were, were sections of it that were a little bit brighter um, or had a little bit more pigmentation. Um, so that kind of pulls everything together nicely. Now to add those final finishing touches, I'm just going through with our brown tone and I'm just going around the edge. So this is very slowly done and just very carefully. I'm just kind of defining different areas. I have, if you purchase the reference image, I have some of the veining and definition in there. And so I'm doing a little bit of it with this brown tone and just kind of, again, really adding in some definition where I feel like, oh, this needs to pop a little bit more or this needs a little bit more of a boost. I'm doing that first with the brown and then I will go in with the peacock blue and start to define the veins. And I'm just going over this with, again, a very, very light wash. This is a very pigmented color. And so I want to make sure that it is still very subtle. I don't want it to kind of smack you in the face, but I want to show some of the definition in the wings. Now, if you think I had forgotten the masking fluid, you'd be right, I had. So I had to come back later after the paint had dried. I'm just taking a regular eraser and I'm gently running over the masking fluid. That will help it to come off uh, pretty seamlessly and just very gently without disrupting the paint. Um, you can do this with an eraser, you can do it by hand, but I do find that the eraser is much faster. To soften the edges left over by the masking fluid, I'm going to take this small detail brush. It's a size three Princeton Heritage watercolor brush. And without adding any pigment to it, this is just a slightly damp brush. I'm going to go over the edges. And again, that's just to soften it. It will reactivate some of the paint that is already on the paper. Um, I am using dirty water. So it is there's a slight green tint to it, which is working to my advantage. And that will just help to kind of smooth the edges out so that they're not so harsh. Um, masking fluid is a great tool, but it does have its faults. And I find that you know, the harsh irregularity of the lines is the biggest one, at least in my opinion, and with the work that I do. And so I'm just gonna go over every single line and soften it a little bit. If I'm switching from something that's a little bit more green to a little bit more brown, then I'm going to clean off my brush. If I feel like I'm picking up too much pigment, I'm gonna clean off my brush and again, not working with anything particular, just a little bit of water on that brush and that will kind of help to reactivate the pigment that's already on the paper and just soften everything a little bit. And that is our completed Luna Moth. I hope that you enjoyed this process and the result as much as I did. Big thank you to Viviva Colors for sending me the color sheets to play around with. This is my official entry for Inktober 2021, the moon prompt for the 18th. So I'm posting this tutorial a little early in case you wanted to do it along with me. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing and letting me know in the comment section what you would like to paint next, specifically butterfly or moth. I have a couple ideas, but I wanna hear what you guys are thinking. And until next time, happy painting.